All right, great. Well, let's get started. It looks like we have a quorum. Um, good evening, everyone. This is just such an exciting night. I'm so um, thrilled to see everyone. Thank you for joining. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kate Rademacher. Um, you, many of you have heard I've had the honor and the privilege of assuming leadership of writing through life and compassionate Christianity as of January 1st, which is fabulous and exciting. Um, I'm thrilled for this event tonight. I have a couple slides, but I'm just going to speak to the agenda because I was having some issues going back and forth. So um, I'll put the agenda up in a minute. But um, just to say the purpose of tonight is to share some additional updates. We have uh, one new and exciting special announcement, late breaking and exciting special announcement. Um, we have our wonderful friend and colleague, Brian McLaren here. Um, and just, he's gonna, I asked Brian to share some reflections and thoughts about what, um, what writing for your life, publishing in color and compassionate community Christianity have meant uh, to him and to the world. So excited to hear from Brian. And um, of course we have Brian Elaine here um, and our colleague Joyce Dinkins. And so again, we're gonna be sharing some updates and thanking Brian Elaine for his incredible leadership and service. Um, just before a few additional logistics for those who are just joining, um, I invite you to introduce yourself in the chat, including where you're from. Uh, we are recording this session, so we'll post it online for those who aren't able to be here in per uh, live. And, um, let me just go ahead and share my slides so that we can uh, so I can share the agenda. And if you are just coming in, I would just ask you to mute yourself. All right, so welcome. Um, so here's the agenda. I just have gone over the welcome and logistics. And um, I think now, and we're, before we ask Brian McLaren to share a few words of reflection, I'm just gonna go over um, <clears throat> what the three platforms are that we're talking about tonight. Um, all three of these, as most of you know, were founded by the amazing Brian Elaine, um, who has been a friend and mentor to so many of us. Um, Brian and I met in, I think, 2017. And he's been just an incredible colleague and mentor to me since then. <clears throat> um, he started writing through life. And Brian, you can give us the dates maybe when you share your remarks. Writing through life, as many of you know, is a resource center for spiritual writers, including conferences, services, and other resources that support um, individuals in their writing journey. Um, publishing in Color, and you see the websites here. I encourage you to visit them if you haven't already. Um, Publishing in Color is a platform designed to facilitate relationships and networking opportunities to increase the number of books published by spiritual writers of color. And then Compassionate Christianity um, is a platform which provides inclusive, welcoming, and affirming resources for compassionate Christians. And of course, we know that Brian Elaine has done other things, including How to Heal Our Divides and the two books that have emerged from that work. And hopefully Brian can tell us a little bit about those and the future of those. Um, but before we go any farther, I am delighted and thrilled to share that, um, as you all know, I've, I have assumed leadership of Writing for Life and Compassionate Christianity as of January, for, uh, January 1st, and um, Brian and I are thrilled to share that tonight that Joyce Dinkins will be assuming leadership of Publishing in Color. So, um, Joyce, can you, can you give a wave and perhaps... Um, let me just stop sharing my slides for a minute and maybe just uh, let's give Joyce a round of um, a blessing and round of applause. <clears throat> Joyce, do you want to just say a minute? I know we're going to, what we're going to do is later in the agenda, Joyce and I are both going to share our visioning for the future, but Joyce, do you want to just jump in and say a word here for a minute about publishing in color? You know, I always have some words <laughs> <laughs> and um, the word that came to mind when you said, you know, um, to clap and praise God was also to, to pray. Because looking at what, um, I won't speak too long, Kate, but looking at what the Lord planted in, in Brian and how he has managed through not only publishing in color, but these other conferences and developed all these relationships, we know that, that uh, it's the Lord's work. And um, I'm, I'm looking to, as I... Uh, continue to come alongside this conference, um, have that same level of enthusiasm Brian's had and um, commitment and um, uh, the ability to delegate <laughs> some things to people as you and I've talked about, 
Kate, and you've encouraged me to do. No, but I don't want to turn it off. I can't turn it off. Somebody can't turn their audio off. Maybe I don't know. You're you're good. Okay, but uh, I'm I am excited. I'm also humbled, and um and sober, uh and um and uh, while I am envisioning some things, I'm as you know, Kate and Brian constantly always waiting on the Lord for next steps. Um, but uh, definitely committed to um, encourage and help writers break into this uh, field that has been um, difficult, challenging for uh, writers of color to break into. So um, y'all pray. <laughs> and thanks for that minute, Kate. Thanks so much, Joyce. So again, we're going to come back. Both Joyce and I are going to share some of our thoughts about the strategic visioning that we're hoping to do for writing for your life and compassionate Christianity in my case and, and publishing colors in her case. But before we did that, we've invited, um, as I mentioned, for those who are coming in a little late, we've invited our friend, um, an extraordinary human being and writer, Brian McLaren, to share a few words of reflection. Um, again, for those who are coming in late, part of what we're doing tonight is celebrating what's happened so far. Um, and of course, thinking forward to the future. So we're gonna be asking all of you for your input. So save your ideas and suggestions, but, but Brian McLaren, maybe I'll hand it over to you. And again, just to share some thoughts about what these platforms have meant and, and, and perhaps to say a word of gratitude for Brian Elaine. So thanks, Brian, sure. to Brian. Thanks. That's right. We're confusing things with lots of Brian's here. Good to see you, Brian Elaine, and all of you, and Kate and Joyce. What a pleasure to be here with you at this kind of passing of a baton. It's very, very exciting. I first met Brian Elaine um, over a writer named Fred Beekner. Many of you would know Frederick and know his work. Um, and Fred is a remarkable per was a remarkable person, is a remarkable person, a remarkable writer, because he was advocating compassionate Christianity before people realized how rare it was and how much it was needed and how much it needed advocates. And uh, Fred uh, saw the value, uh, fr Fred embodied this compassionate Christianity, and Brian Elaine uh, did so much to get Fred's name and work out uh, through social media and, and in other ways. Uh, and that makes me just think uh, something that brings uh, probably all of us together here is this appreciation for good writers and good writing. Um, I had a editor, uh, no, actually an agent say to me a couple of years ago, uh, he said, Brian, people are reading more than they've ever read they're just reading it for free on the internet rather than paying to read it in books. And he said, that means that, that writers have to understand what a remarkable thing it is. Writers of books have to understand how remarkable it is for a person to make a commitment of not just spending 30 seconds or four or five minutes with you, but to spend seven or 11 or 20 hours with you. And ever since that agent said that to me, I can't forget it because what I realize, what I love about reading is that in a certain sense, for those 60,000 or 80,000 or however many thousand words, I'm in a sense crawling into a writer's head and getting to look at the world through her eyes, getting to think about the world through their thoughts. And not only that, I'm sort of opening up through my eyes or if it's an audio book through my ears, I'm letting that author into my head to plant a bunch of their words in my head. It's just a remarkable thing what writing is. And especially when people are, are writing on behalf of compassionate Christianity, this is a really, really big deal. And it was Brian Elaine's instinct to to bring these things together, a concern for compassionate Christianity and a concern for writers who would get into people's heads with that message of compassionate Christianity. To me, it's a really remarkable thing. Um, 
I, I know all of you are impressed by this as well, so I don't need to say too much about it, but I accept it. I, I want to say to honor Brian Elaine, you know, when I met him, I, I just got the feeling here's somebody who gets things done, but he doesn't just get things done for himself. He gets things done for other people and he gets things done to build communities. And not only does he get things done for other people, for communities, but he does it through community. He's a team builder. He brings people together. To bring people together and build teams, you have to build trust. And he builds trust, I think, by, by speaking clearly and, and not being in the sort of exaggeration or marketing or campaigning mode, but being but speaking straight and speaking true and making promises and keeping them. And um, and I've just, th that that ability to build trust through honest communication to me is a remarkable thing, especially because a lot of the work that Brian has done has been through technology. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm ashamed of this, I'm, but I'm just sort of making a confession myself. I often use technology because I'm in a hurry and I don't have time for a personal conversation. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm just trying to get so many things done. But what I've noticed about Brian is he uses the technology to build personal relationships and build personal trust. And it's really a remarkable thing that I admire. Um, uh, Joyce mentioned uh, that part of that process for Brian is delegating. And of course, now, in a sense, passing on these uh, projects that he's given birth to um, is a sign of not only building trust for himself, but extending trust to others and, uh, and delegating um, to them. Um, uh, I, I, I want to say also that there are an awful lot of people who, who, for, for whom publishing and social media and gatherings, conventions, conferences, and so on, are ways to get themselves known and to get themselves noticed. But Brian has this rare quality that he's using these media to get other people known and to get other people noticed and to get this message of a compassionate vision of Christian faith out to more and more people and help the people who have the message to take it in uh, more deeply. Um, and among the other many things, you know, wonderful things I'd like to say about uh, about you, Brian, Elaine, um, it's obvious that you have very good taste in this circle of people who come together, who uh, network of people uh, who you have uh, are, are a real center point for, but especially uh, in seeing Kate and her incredible leadership potential and Joyce and her wonderful potential. And, and uh, to see this work continue through them, I think is a beautiful thing. Um, in closing, I'll just say, uh, some of you may know, I've had the privilege these last uh, several years of working closely with Richard Rohr, who um, uh, has had you know some big ups and downs in health. And he's on a very encouraging up in his health lately. Um, but Richard has been living, he's had, I think, three different kinds of cancer now. One of them he had twice. So he's had, I think, you know, four bouts of cancer in, in, I don't know, the last 15 or 20 years. And so he's had to face the reality of, uh, of death. And one of the problems as he's gotten older is people want to express how much they appreciate, to him, appreciate him. So they send him gifts. And he says, and he says, Gifts are not my love language. <laughs> um, and so then somebody said, well, Richard, what is your love language? And he says, I don't think it's one of the official love languages, but here's mine. He says, if, if you love me, then love the things that I love and be about what I've been about. And I think this is maybe the thing, I, I, I'm not sure about this, but I would think that Brian Elaine shares that love language in the sense that one of the ways that all of us, I think, can will demonstrate our appreciation for him is by giving support to Kate and Joyce and uh, by being about 
the same compassionate Christianity that Brian's been about. So uh, it's my, I, uh, it sounds funny to talk about you behind your back in front of your, your face on this screen, Brian, but I'm sure grateful for this good work that you've done. I'm sure grateful for these beautiful projects that are helping writers uh, write about things that really, really matter. So, uh, and, and then we think mm -hmm. in the next five and 10 and 20 years more, that these new writers will be able to climb into the heads and hearts of more and more people and uh, and help reorient their thinking and vision and life and values. So thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. You put it so well, and I think captured what so much of our, um, our thinking and feeling. And so, um, one of the challenges of planning this event is that, of course, one of the many, many amazing qualities Brian Elaine has is that he's so humble. And so I know this is, he's probably just squirming, but um, we did want to give Brian Elaine um, a chance, please, to just, you know, share a few of your own reflections and your hopes for the future, what, you, what you're planning next. That's the big question everybody's been asking. What's Brian Elaine planning next? Um, so, Brian, I'll hand it to you. And thank you um, also, again, Brian McLaren, for sharing your reflections. Well, I basically only have three words, <laughs> grateful, uh, thrilled, and thanks. Um, I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful to God for giving me the chance to do all this stuff. Um, I'm very grateful for my wife for putting up with all the craziness um, that I <laughs> uh, had. And, and I'm very grateful for all of you and all the people that I've had the chance to work with. I mean, that has been the blessing of my life. I mean, uh, to, to be able to do this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm just very, very grateful. So that's grateful. Thrilled. Um, I'm thrilled about, you know, handing this over to Kate and to Joyce. I mean, my goodness, this is what you would consider to be a best case scenario, you know, to have people like that to um, take what was started and take it further and build it more. And I'm going to support them however I can to do that. Um, and then I'm also thrilled to have a chance to go do something else. And um, I'm not going to say a lot about that because I don't know what all that's going to be yet. I mean, I've been intentionally um, not trying to focus on the future because I want to do everything I can for the transitions, you know, for Kate and Joyce to, and, you know, to take these over. Um, but there are two things that I've been working on that I will continue. So I should mention those. One is that what Kate already mentioned, um, How to Heal Our Divides. We've got two books that have come out that are focused on um, healing different types of um, uh, divides. So I'm going to continue working on that platform. And then there's another platform that hasn't been announced, um, but it's not a secret or anything. And it was an idea from Brian McLaren that we've been um, working on, a whole series of folks have been working on called Raising Kids for Good. So um, that Hopefully we'll have an announcement, you know, sometime later this year about that. But uh, but I'm going to continue to work on those two projects. And then I'm going to be in kind of like listening and discerning, mode, honestly, and having conversations with a whole lot of different folks about uh, brainstorming, because um, most of the stuff that I've been doing was, quite frankly, somebody else's idea. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? That's a good idea. Maybe we could do that. <laughs> so. Um, uh, those have been the God moments for me, honestly, uh, where, you know, I'm not good at meditation and those kinds of things, but, <laughs> you know, people have spoken to me. God has spoken to me through other people. And so um, when I say I'm going to be in listening mode, I'm going to be in serious listening mode. So thank you all so much for all your kind words. Thank you for all the support that you've, you know, given all these crazy projects that I've been working on for the last few years. Uh, I really appreciate that um, deeply. So thanks so much. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, so everyone, um, an additional, uh, Brian, we have a surprise for you um, and it's sort of half finished. Um, we have started a memory book for you and about 20 of us have contributed so far. Um, for those of you who haven't had a chance to contribute yet, I just put the chat in the link. Um, this is the first Brian Elaine's hearing of it. Again, for those who've contributed, thank you so much. Um, and for those who haven't contributed, please do so by Friday of this week. 
Um, and then we're going to, I'll send Brian a electronic version over the weekend, and then we'll print a hard copy for him and turn it into a book and mail it to him. So, um, and one of the people who has contributed, but was not able to join tonight is a longtime friend and collaborator of Brian's Barbara Brown Taylor. Um, so I'll just read, she asked me to read aloud her message uh, for tonight. So it's just, it's just short, but I'm just, it was so moving. I wanted to share this as well. So this is from Barbara Brown Taylor. Brian Elaine has taught me more about generosity, invention, collaboration, and divine synergy than anyone I have ever known. I am deeply grateful to him for his faith in me, which I returned tenfold after all these years of working together. Whatever he thinks up next, it will be a great success. Thanks be to God. So that's from Barbara. Um, so let's maybe I'll give Brian a virtual. You guys, you're too, way too kind. <laughs> oh my. Thank you very much. So thank you, Brian. You've um, and uh, yeah. Before before I get too teary, um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just um, I think Joyce and I now have about ten minutes on the agenda together, about five minutes each. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to share a few thoughts about sort of what I'm thinking as next steps for writing for your life and compassionate Christianity, and then hand it to Joyce to talk about her thoughts about publishing in color. Um, so in the meantime, again, you can be multitasking if you want and adding to Brian's memory book, or you can wait till after the event and do it later. Um, uh, and I'll just say, you know, my first encounter with Brian and writing for life was as a conference in Ra Raleigh, actually, where Brian, uh, Barbara and Taylor was the keynote. And I, I hate this phrase because it's kind of cheesy, but I, I've never felt this at any other event. I said, uh, I, I was, I was there at the end of day one. And I thought to myself, I have finally found my tribe. Um, and that's, again, a, a phrase that can be, you know, overused or often used, but I meant it and I've meant it still. So I am just so beyond honored to be assuming leadership. Um, and I'll just, for, since I'm a little bit less of a known entity in this space than some other folks, I'll just say two sentences about my background for those who don't know. Um, I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. My husband, David's on the line. Maybe he can wave. Um, he is going to be helping with this, with um, with both of these platforms. And um, I worked for the past 25 years in public health. The last 15 years have been in international public health with a focus on expanding access to contraception um, in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. And so while all of that big career stuff was happening, I had a side hustle um, and um, in addition had an unexpected um, conversion journey and was uh, baptized and confirmed about 10 years ago um, in the Episcopal Church. And out of that emerged a memoir about my um, my, my conversion journey in the year following it, following Red Bird, and then two books um, followed after that, a memoir about our experience as foster parents, and then a book about Sabbath keeping called Reclaiming Rest that was published by Broadleaf Books um, about a year ago. So through all that, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know anything about book marketing and Brian Elaine and the resources he provided and the community that I found through all of you just were invaluable. I still don't really know what I'm doing. So maybe that gets to the number one thing I want to want to do um, is that I want to learn. You know, I'm still in total learning mode. And so one of the best benefits of being more involved with these platforms is that I get to learn alongside with you. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that opportunity. Um, I would say my second priority, uh, like Brian said, is to listen. You know, one of the, my biggest fears is that I'm just going to screw up um, what Brian has has done that's been so successful. So I really want to listen to you all. What's working? What do you want to see new or additions? Uh, what suggestions do you have? And so in about, you know, once Joyce and I are done talking, you know, speaking, sharing our thoughts, we're going to have hopefully about 25 minutes to hear from you all. Um, initial reactions, additional words, of course, of, of thanks for Brian, but also what are your suggestions and priorities for the next, um, you know, coming months. Um, as part of that, I'm hoping to, I'm planning to distribute a survey um, via the e-newsletters that go out um, every month. And so please look for a link for um, surveys to provide your feedback. If you don't have a chance tonight, I encourage you to fill those out to really share your feedback. And also before we end tonight, I'll be sure to put all three of our email addresses in the chat. And I please would encourage you to reach out to me anytime with your suggestions, ideas, um, requests, et cetera. Um, I'll just say two more goals and then I'll hand it to Joyce. 
um, I would say, you know, this event for me is part of it is facilitating connections. Um, I just saw Jen Butler. Come on. Hi, Jen. I mean, I've just met so many amazing people. I've had about 30 phone calls with um, folks in the past three months as I've been working on this transition with Brian. You all have been so supportive, so gracious, so helpful, so encouraging. And I'm just incredibly grateful. And I want to continue to facilitate that kind of connections community building. I think a lot of us are feeling isolated and lonely. David Morris did an amazing talk last night for us, our second Tuesdays writing for life. And one of the things we talked a lot about was a feeling of alienation and disconnection. And I think just events like this um, can help so much. And in-person events and online events, um, Brian has brought a lot of us together and I wanna continue to nurture that and facilitate that. And then one thing that I'd really love to do, and again, this is a particular area of passion for mine, and I'd love to talk with anyone about this, is facilitating connections with more of our friends and colleagues who are located in the global south. Um, I've had the benefit of working um, in sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia, as I mentioned, um, for the past 15 years, and have a lot of amazing colleagues and friends, many of whom are incredible people and leaders of faith. And as we know, Christianity is just growing, growing, growing in the global South. And I think we need to do more um, to, you know, to have dialogues between the global North and global South. So that's going to be a priority of mine in the coming year. Um, and then just finally, I want to support and left lift you all. Um, as Brian McLaren said, Brian Elaine has been so amazing about um, you know, doing so much to support others. And part of what really motivates me is concern for our country and our world, and just knowing that we need to foster progressive thought leadership. Um, writers and readers are such an important part of that in terms of both shaping the narrative and figuring out how the narrative translates into action, um, both interaction of the Holy Spirit and of course, outer action in our communities and the world. So I just really wanna uplift you all. And um, if there's any way I can promote your work, um, support you in your work, please again, reach out to me and I'll put my chat, my email address in the chat. So those are some of my thoughts about my priorities, but again, really, really looking forward to having your feedback. Um, and for those who joined late, I will repeat the announcement and then hand it to my sister in Christ, Joyce. Um, we have we announced at the beginning of the um, event that Joyce Dinkins, an amazing human being, um, and I will say I met Joyce two years before I met Brian Elaine, and we met, uh, we found each other like. It was a Holy Spirit moment in, in the middle of a thousand, thousands and thousands of people in ALA conference in Chicago. And it was one of the most, most powerful Holy Spirit moments of my life. And Joyce Dinkins will be taking over leadership of publishing in color. So thank you, Joyce. And i um, really excited about that and, and look forward. Uh, I'll hand it now to you, Joyce, to share a few thoughts about what your priorities are for publishing in color. And maybe you can also just, you know, reiterate what you see as the mission for those who aren't as familiar with publishing in color. Thank you. I, I've got to um, start with saying that I think we are led by the Holy Spirit. And I think that has empowered, that same spirit has empowered Brian Elaine. Yeah. Um, you know, when we met Kate, I was just driven to walk the floors of that huge conference, looking and looking and looking for what had I missed? Who had I missed? And actually, because of my love to see uh, people of color in literature um, who are often absent, um, that's what I was looking for. But I found you. I was looking for people of color and I found you. And you are a person of color, just a different, different color. <laughs> um, I want to say, um, in line with that, that the Holy Spirit introduced me to Brian. Um, I believe it was 2016. I had joined Our Daily Bread, where I continue after, um, after almost eight years as an executive editor. And uh, Jeff Crosby, who's the president of the Evangelical Christian Publishing Association, uh, he and I had uh, met at a track on diversity that I and my peers had created for uh, Publishers University, um, an ECPA function. Uh, Jeff and I met and uh, was conducting that track. And um, he later, after I think being touched by 
my continued um, mention, not only at that conference, PubU, but at other conferences, my continual mention of the absence of people of color in publishing and particularly in Christian publishing in the industry where I've served now for uh, about 35 years, I think. Uh, I've watched and looked and looked and searched for people of color. And so Jeff um, told Brian Elaine in 2016, I think it was, to give me a call and to begin to pray. And, uh, and we did pray and we have prayed and we have been led by the Lord to uh, continue to um, be ambassadors for um, for Christian publishing, you know it's not it's not an unknown uh, fact. Uh, whether it's Pen America who's talked about it, uh, or um, the ECPA that has a diversity subcommittee I'm on uh, that talks about it. Um, many other groups, Publishers Weekly has published many articles about it. Uh, the fact of the lack of diversity um, in Christian publishing. And um, Brian has had a, I'm going to say what comes to my mind, it's sort of a one-man show in some respects of trying to change that. So after we prayed, uh, as um, Brian McLaren uh, shared and you shared, Kate, uh, we... Um, I was moved by Brian to try to collaborate with him uh, in his new effort, Publishing in Color. And so uh, amid my duties as uh, an executive editor at Our Daily Bread, uh, that ministry uh, funded my way and I went to the first Publishing in Color conference in uh, New Jersey, right, Brian? Yeah, 2018 in um, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Brunswick. And um, one of the things that I noticed and I want to say about Brian, um, others have said it in different ways, but um, there, there can be in some of these efforts that we engage in, I'm speaking very frankly, they, there can be a certain paternalism involved where, um, and, and a tokenism uh, approach, tokenist approach, um, where there is representation of people of color, but all under the gaze of uh, European Americans who will dictate and run what's going on. And that's just a fact that I've experienced. Others may not have experienced that, but I have experienced that what I noticed immediately about Brian is that he refused to be out front. He expended energy, finances, time. He stewarded what God has given to him um, and allowed uh, people of color to be up front. And um, he's continued that throughout the years that I've know him uh, and he's been very patient with me. I he's a very uh, proactive and uh, driven individual. I am too and I envision many things uh, uh, and, and work energetically, but I think I take time. I take my time and I, I am um, uh, praying with Brian often. Brian spends hours hour and 15 minutes with me mulling over things that probably normally would take him only 15 minutes to do. But he's a very considerate, um, we, I call him a uh, brother. And um, I know that his enthusiasm, that root word enthusiasm, um, that his enthusiasm comes from God. Um, we may have different views on different things, but we uh, both love the Lord, and we have developed a love for one another, and I'm grateful for that. Um, you know, uh, Brian, Brian, he is a doer. He uh, 
He is enthusiastic. Um, he listens. He does hear God and obeys God's timing. An interesting thing for me is that at the time that Our Daily Bread Ministries was beginning uh, what we now call voices and producing resources, acquiring uh, more writers of color and serving audiences of color, Black audiences in particular. At the time that Brian was developing um, publishing in color, uh, it gave to me and to those that I work with opportunities to acquire writers, new writers, um, for the work of voices. It's just amazing how um, we together have been able to be sensitive to what the Lord is doing there. Um, God's timing and God's connections. Uh, the relationship uh, work that Brian does um it's it's hard to uh hard to describe uh but it's just real it's uh not fancy it's just um it's just real uh genuine um care for people uh in action he doesn't simply pray about it he actually puts feet to whether how, how much he meditates or not, he puts feet to his prayers. So I I thank God for um, for you, Brian. I thank God for the opportunities, the doors that you've um, opened for voices, how you've helped uh, our daily bread with voices, and for the uh, opportunities you've given to those individuals uh, who are looking for a door to open, to get in. Uh, you call it an on-ramp, looking for an on-ramp. And um, you've been skillful and intent and um, expended yourself uh, serving others. And um, I am greatly um, aware of that and appreciative of it. So over the next uh, several months, you're going to have to spend more energy with me, teaching me how to make the sausage. <laughs> and we've already started with uh, with uh, your guidance in helping me to uh, bring people like Andy Rogers, who's on this call, and and others uh, into um, that March 13th through 17th Publishing and Color Conference. Um, so you'll have to. Continue to be patient with me in terms of uh, developing the newsletter and the, you know delegating social media um, and uh, running these conferences uh, virtual now and who knows what the Lord will uh, will do uh, next. Um, so brilliant, persuasive you are, Brian. Um, and um, resourceful. And um, I just thank God for connecting us, um, for the love that you've shown me, uh, the love in Christ, and uh, being a model for, um, for a servant, you know, what it means to be a true servant. And um, so... I'm grateful that I got to join Publishing in Color in your head before it began and pray with you about it and participate in so many conferences. And um, we'll work out all the details as I and you do, you know, as we do. It takes me some time, uh, but uh, we're looking forward to a great conference in March. And uh, and uh, I, I've got a note here from uh, the conference I attended in 2018, a couple of memories I want to share. This note, and I want to share a note from my first um, presentation at Publishing in Color, which was, um, I said, um, to, with, with tears in my eyes, to the writers who were present, uh, I've been looking for you my whole life. Because for someone like me, who was born in the 50s, 1950 to be exact, uh, there were no images, no stories, except a caricature or a negative um, 
you know, something derogatory of people of color, of people like me in anything, not in movies, uh, not in uh, books, all um, ab absence. We weren't, we weren't visible. And uh, I think you should take great joy uh, in the fact, Brian, of how visible, not only individual writers, how visible you've allowed them to become, but just people. You've allowed us as people to become through your efforts, visible, seen, and heard, and um, our experiences honored. Yeah, I said that to the writers. I did sing as we opened that conference. <laughs> and I usually do have some kind of a song of praise because it is um, it has been my lifelong dream to see myself and others to see all people in literature. Um, in 2019, I believe it was, we were in California and I said this and I'll continue to say it, I'll say it, I'll emphasize this and then I'll be quiet, Kate. Um, I wrote, uh, this conference is one evidence, publishing color, of publishers desire to diversify and publish more writers of color. If we want to see this conference continue, we have to get onto our social networks and advise through the grapevine the benefits of meeting editors and establishing relationships through publishing in color. These conferences are a tremendous undertaking. Please promote and consider attending the next one in March, back then it was in New Jersey at Drew. Visit publishingincolor.com and interact. We editors, agents, and authors, and more speak on panels in solo messages and workshops to share industry knowledge and to see you. I've enjoyed collaborating to publish hundreds of works by all different faces and voices, but there currently, to the best of my knowledge, is not another conference like Brian's, though I'm sure he would be delighted to see more. So Kate, uh, I'll close with that and uh, I don't know if the, if there's anything else that you wanted to hear besides a song. I don't know that I'm singing tonight unless the Holy Spirit. Thank leads you. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joyce. Maybe maybe we'll close with a song or certainly with yes, a song or prayer if you if you're willing. Um, I'm willing. So I think we're gonna you know maybe go a couple minutes over the hour if folks are willing to hang on and you know just want to open the floor. So thank you so much for, for everyone, Joyce, for speaking and, and the two Brian's. Um, what I really like to do now is just open the floor to anyone who wants to, um, in particular, I think, share priorities moving forward. You know, we really want to hear from you. Again, um, if you want to share a word of gratitude for Brian Elaine, um, you can add that to the to the link that I shared um, a moment ago up in the chat. So, you know, are, and please consider unmuting yourself or raising your hand or putting your ideas in the chat, um, what you think um, you would like to see moving forward in particular. Um, I see John's hand raised. John, do you wanna jump in? Sure, uh, I just wanna thank you, Brian, for um, everything you've done. Uh, I just wanna say that, um, I attended, I think, three publishing, uh, three writing for your life conferences at Princeton, but I didn't really find my voice until you um, did the conference for LGBTQ writers, spiritual writers, uh, which was a big gamble for you, um, and I'm not sure it paid off financially, but thank you for taking that risk. And um, maybe writing for your life could take another risk like that in the future. Uh, I was just at a conference with 750 queer Christians, and many of them were glad to hear about that conference where I feel I found my voice. 
Amen. Thank you, John Carl. Thank you, John Carl. And also, I'll just say we haven't given a shout out. Thank you for that um, um, uh, shout out and suggestion, John, John Carl. And also, we haven't given a shout out for the children's conference. So within Writing for Your Life, there's a children's conference. And, you know, one of the things I've learned as I've been doing this transition with Brian and from, from several of you is that I think this is one of the first only children Christian children's conferences in the United States. And several of you who are on the line were instrumental in, um, I understand from Brian's telling of the history, were instrumental in suggesting that conference. And there was an online um, children's conference for Writing for Life this fall. And so one of my priorities, top priorities, is to reach out to hopefully schedule another one for, for either the spring or the fall, depending on what dates work. So that's another important piece of this um, family of events and resources that will continue as, as well. Are there others who want to jump in with, with feedback or suggestions? You can come off mute or raise your hand. David, was that a hand raise or a yeah. wave? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, first, I'll just say, uh, Kate, that uh, and Joyce, congratulations. I think uh, for the future, one of the things I think about a lot is um, just how um, publishers rely on authors so much these days to bring to bring momentum to just driving awareness for their books. And I think that a lot of success for you know this cohort will be to how well you can equip writers for understanding how to, all, that power that they actually do have. Um, one of the ways I like to talk about it is, is that maybe it's not about getting on bestseller lists as much anymore in this time of disruption that we're in. And maybe it's more about connecting with your more um, like, uh, you know, vertical community, uh, a tighter knit community and it's higher engagement. And I tell authors, it's also a time when you can get so much more satisfaction and being much closer to your readers than you've ever been. And, um, but a lot of that's through technology. And uh, it's it it can feel really onerous and exhausting, and I think that uh, that's that's going to be a key thing for up and coming writers. Some of them are, are more natural at it, um, but that um, you know workshops on equipping them on you know website services or you know simple things about email lists and social media and how those create connections, not community itself, but connections. And I've seen it happen time and again, especially lately. And then I just want to say, Brian, congrats. Good luck. We met when you were with uh, the Beekner Institute and uh, those two books we did, you brought, you brought a couple of Beekner uh, ideas to Zondervan when I was there at the time and um, they're still doing well. They're still there. If you, you search Beekner, so um, you're bringing him to other readers um, still. And um, I remember how you would always refer to him as um, Mr. Beekner. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, wow, here's someone who's senior to me just by a little bit and uh, the respect that he's showing. So I think right now we all need to be calling you Mr. Elaine. Ah! Oh, please, please. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, thank you, David. And I'm, I'm really glad that those books are doing well. But no, no one needs to call me Mr. Please. Yeah. Best wishes to you. I really have admired your courage and you know your pragmatism that drives you to just go ask questions and and, and get people to join in on this effort. It's really been a, a great model for all of us. No, well, thanks so much, David. It's like I said, it's been an incredible blessing for me. So much, David. Others who want to jump in? I may miss your hand. So if you want to jump off mute. Maybe everybody's just excited to hear Joyce sing. Joyce, get your vocal cords warmed up. All right, Vicki looks like has a raised hand. Vicki, you want to jump in? Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to say to Brian, um, I've only been to one Running for Your Life conference in June in Denver. Um, well, actually, and then three, really, because two online. And um, they've been life-changing and helped motivate me to start writing uh, the book I believe God has placed within me. And um, <clears throat> so 
I probably echo everyone else here tonight and just saying thank you. Um, I'm not sure I would be writing or blogging right now or trying to get this book out into a form that others could read it if it hadn't been for the conference I attended in um, June. So thank you. I can keep going. And I'm glad, Kate, that um, it's been handed on, Kate and Joyce, and that it'll, these will be continuing, that it's not going to end with um, Brian retiring from this this vocation. It sounds like he's got other vocations lined up. But <laughs> I'm glad they're not ending. And thank you for um, continuing on and uh, taking the baton. <laughs> so much Vicki it's been awesome engaging with you in the recent events so thank you so much yes um, thank, you so much, again, Vicky. Yeah, thank you so much Vicky. And, and I really do want to encourage everyone to support Kate and Joyce um, you know e even more than all the wonderful support that you've given me I mean anytime you're launching into a new thing that you're involved in it's challenging um, and so Kate and, and Joyce will have lots of challenges you know come their way many more things that I never had to deal with I'm sure so, you know, the more support that you can all give them, um, I would really appreciate that. And I know they would too. Thanks, Brian. And I, um, Danielle, just one second, I see your hand, I'll come to you. So just to point everybody to the chat, if you haven't seen it, we have the dates and the links for the Writing for Your Life conference and the business of being a spiritual writer, which Brian will lead in Atlanta, March 6th through 8th, and then Publishing and Color will be online the following week, March 13th and 17th. So I encourage you to register, check that out, or share it with your friends and colleagues if you haven't already. Um, Danielle, do you want to jump in? Hey, good evening, everybody. I just want to say congratulations, Brian, Kate, and Joyce. I'm extremely excited about what is next for all of you, all three of you. Um, this year, 2022, was my first time attending Publishing in Color. And one of the things that I would love to see is more outreach to writers of color, um, because I recognize as a writer of color that sometimes our experiences cause us to kind of go into our own holes, our own silos and, and be with one another. And so then when there are greater opportunities, we miss those. We are not necessarily looking for them because we don't expect them to be there. Um, but I did share, I've shared with a couple of people that uh, publishing in color for me was the greatest opportunity for connection uh, that I had seen in a long time uh, as a Black writer, as a Christian writer. And so I would love to see more intentional efforts of saying, hey, we're here. Um, we exist to support you in this way and on your journey. I've been following and a part of the Writing for Your Life uh, newsletter for a couple of years now, but really that um, that, hey, come on in, right? When I reached out, Brian was like, hey, come on in. Um, and, and that that feeling carried itself through the conference. So I would just love to see that extend the, the reach of the conference. Thank you so much. Um, and, you know, one of the most powerful things I've ever learned is the power of word of mouth. So, you know, especially so with social media algorithms and, you know, advertising being challenging, I think, again, the more we can see this as a growing community, as a way for us to connect, as you're saying, and I think that's just so beautiful and powerful what you shared and hoping that we can all help spread the word. So thank you so much. Um, so we just have a couple minutes left. Anybody else want to jump in? Um, Bethany? Hi, thanks, Kate. I just wanted to say thank you to Brian. I was at that 2018 first publishing in color conference. And then when I got there, I thought, wow, I found my tribe. That that was just a wonderful outreach. I've been to a lot of Brian's conferences since then. And they've all been very well executed. I'm always so surprised how it goes smoothly, uh, seamlessly. Um, and the newsletter is always informative. So I just like to thank him for um, continuing to do this work um, and even including me. Um, I started doing videos because I thought it looks so, he made it look so easy. And I found out that it's not that easy, but um, he could just tape an hour long video and, and it just looks flawless. So I just appreciate all he's done and all he's um, allowed me to do and just kind of coming alongside him every once in a while. So, and I'm willing to, um, help um, in any way I can, just based on the past experiences I've had with the uh, other conferences for Kate and Joyce and um, even Brian and whatever um, endeavors he's doing later. So thank you so much. Really appreciate all you've done, Brian. Well, thank you so much, Bethany. I mean, it's been a pleasure to collaborate with you and uh, 
you know, there's just so many people that um, we've had the pleasure of, of working together. And uh, that's just been such a blessing for me. There's no question about that. But thank you so much, Bethany. I'll add my two cents if that's okay. Uh, yeah. I'm Jenny McLaurin and a graduate of the Gillian School of Public Health as well. And uh, uh, I have written in your your little book that's being formed, Brian, and I, I could just go on and on and on. So uh, I won't do that actually, because you don't have that much time, but um, I do appreciate your welcome, your, your generosity of spirit. And one of the things that I said is I, uh, I, I felt familiar, like I was in a familiar place and I'm using that word like family. And I have felt so estranged as a Christian where I don't like to, I don't like to say that I'm any particular denomination or stripe. I don't use the E word. Um, I don't even like the word progressive because everything has so many labels associated with it. So I like, you know, mere Christianity, but you, you really provided a place where um, I felt like I could be with others who, um, as Joyce said earlier, maybe we don't all agree on the same stuff, but we all um, respect each individual's call and relationship with the Trinity, however they understand that. And that's so precious in these times. Um, I would say that I have matured as a writer since I met Brian. And so one of the things that I think would be cool going forward is, and maybe there already are, and I'm not totally in touch with these groups all the time, but uh, I think it'd be great if there were some mentorship opportunities and some writing, reading, writer reading groups, like people want to read each other's work in progress. There's opportunities uh, for some smaller circles of concern. Um, Kate, you and I have a lot in common professionally, and you know I'd be interested in in having some affinity um, with people who are in some of the same areas I'm in, and also helping along folks who haven't, say, gotten published by a publisher or whatever. So. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll follow up. I'll repaste the our email addresses because it for those of you who want to reach out to Kate, me, uh, Kate, Joyce, or Brian Elaine, um, there are addresses. So it'd be great to follow up. And just I just do want to comment on the mentoring idea. That's something that I've been thinking a lot about. Um, I just have been involved with a mentorship program and in, in my um, other life in my public health life, and it was really powerful. And so for those of you who are a little bit farther along on the journey or um, and or, or maybe industry experts, you may be re I may be reaching out to you to, to see if you might be willing to be in a mentor and for a new initiative. Um, and for those of you who might be interested in being mentored, the other thing that I think can be really exciting for mentoring approaches is a mutual mentorship. Um, so it's not just sort of like mentor mentee, but there's kind of a dual bi-directional um, mentoring relationship, including for those who are you know, younger or less, quote unquote, less experienced. So I think that um, I've been I've been giving that a lot of thought. And for those who might be interested in that would would be happy to take that offline to do some further brainstorming. Um, so thanks for mentioning that. Sherry, do you want to jump in? I would like to. Um, I just want to take the opportunity first to thank Brian um, for the opportunity. I was um, looking for something to do after retirement. And I've always had a passion and passion to work with children. And I was retiring from education and I've always wanted to write. So I showed some interest in um, writing and Brian reached out and said, come to Publishing in Color and see what you think. And I was hooked immediately. And then when he um had the conference for online writing for children's writers, I was hooked. Um, and I, every conference that I've been able to attend, I've attended. Um, it has established or built a level of confidence within me that I didn't know was there. Um, and so I am extremely grateful for the opportunity. I look forward to working with you, Kate, and to participating in additional online children 
uh, children's books, conferences. I've met so many wonderful uh, picture book writers uh, who have been so supportive and who have reached out to me and have included me in the projects that are coming forth. And I look forward also to working with um, Joyce uh, in publishing in color. And um, I've had several individual meetings with her following conferences. And so I just look forward to moving forward with writing for your life. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sherry. I, I love that. It established a level of confidence in me that I didn't know I had. And I think we can all resonate with that. Um, so thank you for those words and for that, for the encouragement. Well, we're almost at the hour. Does anybody else have any final words that they want to want to share or suggestions for, for the, for the future? All right. We're definitely asking the Holy Spirit to invite Joyce to sing. Yes. Um, last time she sang on one of these events, I started crying. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes for me, for me. But, um, I just want to, uh, thank again, Brian McLaren for joining us tonight and for making the time to share his remarks and, and his warm words. Um, and of course, Brian Elaine, who is not going anywhere. Um, we, Joyce and I will not let him, we ask him about 10 questions per day and it's probably going to just get worse. Right. So, um, he's been very gracious and patient. So you can, if you can actually, we all need to pray for Brian Elaine as he continues to support us in this transition. Transition. Um, so thanks be to God. Absolutely. And, you know, I just, my heart is so full and so grateful seeing you all here. So this is just, I think, hopefully a taste of what's to come as we continue to stay engaged. And as this community continues to grow in vibrancy and reach um, and just, just feeling thanks be to God. So I'll hand it over to Joyce to pray us out and may perhaps to sing us out. Well, you know, sometimes I sing when I pray at home alone. And so we'll see what the Holy Spirit gives me. I actually have three different songs on my mind. Usually I just ask the Lord to tell me what to sing. So, and this is not a concert. <laughs> and I'm I'm not pretending to be uh, like the singers I've heard, but um, I do love to praise the Lord. Um, well, I could sing the song that I sang at the very first conference. That just comes to mind. So it's a call and response song. Um, and, um, so let me just, let me just do that and we'll see how that goes. Uh, stay muted, but if you know this song, cause it's really weird when people try to sing together on, on these things and especially call response, but, uh, if you'd stay muted, that'll help me get through this. And, you know, I, one other thing I'm asthmatic. So if I start coughing, I'll take my inhaler, <laughs> but Okay, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to. I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle, in the middle of a wheel. I know he'll never, never, never let me down. He's just a jewel, a jewel that I have found. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. I love to I love to praise his holy name. Now, I, I'll stop there. Let me pray for a minute. Lord, I thank you that you are the beginning and the end. You are our great sovereign God, our creator, our father, 
our Savior, our Lord, our Comforter, O oh God, the orchestrator of our lives, Lord. Thank you for how you've ordered our steps, God, our relationships, Lord, for your glory, God. Thank you, Lord, for your sufficiency, Lord, as we wait on you, Lord, for our next steps, as we seek your voice, God, in our silent times, listening, mouths closed, hands still, listening for you, listening for your directions, God. Thank you for your call on us, Lord, even when we're moving to be listening, when we're writing, when we're editing, when we're leading, when we're serving. Help us to listen to you, Lord, and to follow you. Thank you that you never leave us, you never forsake us, that you are our keeper, our way maker, Lord God. We pray to you, God, let your strength be made perfect, I'll say, in my weakness, Lord God, in our weakness. And uh, help us to be uh, those, among those, who uh, consider always the least of these and those who share the comfort that you've comforted us with. Thank you, God, for all of your people, Lord. And it is in your name that we give you praise. Thank you for Brian and for every person, every one of your children that's on this call and that's part of your work, your kingdom. Help us to reach out to others, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Joyce. My privilege. My privilege. Thank you all so much. Have a blessed night, peaceful night, and thanks again for this time together. Thank thanks you. so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Best wishes Brian. to uh, Kate and Joyce. Thanks. Take care, everyone. <laughs>